Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy, and this is the second video of the day that I'm recording on the 27th of May 2021. And um, I'm just trying to get the gimbal to work. This gimbal's starting to play up a little bit. Yeah. They're not cheap, man. that's any trouble. Oh well, whatever. Seems to be okay so far. So, anyway. I'm still walking through um, that forest that I was in that you saw me in in the last episode and what I would like to talk about in this rather than talk about any kind of specific topical um, thing um, there is something on my mind that I think that I would like to talk about there isn't a word, right, for human intelligence, is there? The thing that makes us different from all the other animals, you know? I don't know that sentient is the right word for it. Um, I'm not sure if it is. The, you know, the, the intelligence that means <clears throat> we've got language. All right, we've got the hands and the opposable thumb. But what it is, the, the, you've got the physical, because you've got the hands and the opposable thumb. So it means that we can make things with our hands. But we've also got this um, um, big brain compared, you know, with uh, more parts to it than you get, including the big left and right hemispheres that you don't get in the rest of the animal kingdom. We have this intellectual side, the, um, you know, the philosophical side, we do maths, English, language, you know, invent shit. So we've got this stuff going on that only human beings have. No one else in the animal kingdom has, right? And uh, as far as I know, I don't know that there is a single word for it. There certainly isn't a word for it that is in common use. And that's the trouble. We should have one word that we use in English language, but again, we should have it in all languages, to describe the, what the specific nature of what it is that we as human beings are that makes us different from the other animals. I mean, is it evolved? Is it sentient? Is it intelligent? Is it... You know, I don't know. But you know what I mean you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, my um, question is, is it this thing that as human beings, being self-reflecting, self-conscious, language-using, tool-using, sentient, whatever, uh, is this the source of our mental illness? Is this what makes us crazy? Lunatics? Is this what makes us um, have suffer from mass delusion, even? You know, mass hysteria. Does this thing that is built on... Because, I mean, you know, bear in mind that this um, condition that we have as human beings that makes us different or from or above the rest of the animals is bolted on to stuff that exists in our archives that came along before we were this, when we used to be monkeys and then when we, before that, when we used to be pre-monkeys and pre-mammals and, or, you know, other things, before we broke off and became human. All right? <sighs> is this what makes us mentally ill? Because I'm thinking that uh, in order for us to be able to be mentally ill, we have to become self-aware and aware of a lot of stuff that we otherwise would not be aware of. And it's a very, very scary thing, finding yourself alone in a universe that you can comprehend. You know, alone in an infinite infinity that you can comprehend. To have a concept of things like the fact that, you know, you know one day you're going to die. And, you know, one day that the human race is going to exist. And even right down to um, your own perspective as a unique individual at the centre of the universe, looking at it from your perspective and even just contemplating that can make you go a bit mad because it's quite frightening. And the thing is that as we, as human beings, are aware of all the stuff that the rest of the animal kingdom is blissfully unaware of, very, they're just in, immersed in nature, in a, in a very simplistic world of instinct and survival, they're not aware of all of this stuff. So I'm just thinking, you know, this kind of existential level, or whatever level that we have, is it what makes us mad? And when we find ourselves going through changes like we're going through at the moment, the world is changing, paradigms are shifting, are the paradigm shifts and the big bangs, if you like, the cultural big bangs as we change from one thing to another, and not always for the best, politically, technologically, culturally, socially, whatever. Um, is this kind of um, collective thing that we have as human beings responsible for making us mental? Because it's built on top of a level that is lower than us, and that level that is lower than us is part of the animal kingdom. It's the part of us that is still hardwired um, to survive um, when predators are around, you know? Like, um, 
So, for instance, a good example of this is that um, kids are not, um, you know, what are kids scared of? Well, monsters under the bed, whatever, you know? Something that in the darkness might eat them. Kids are, um, you know, instinctively wired to be scared of monsters and they get night terrors. Right? Now, this, of course, comes from um, the fact that we probably um, would have been eaten by predators in our sleep. Um, snakes, you know, um, I don't know, lions, tigers, big cats, big uh, dog or wolf like things, you know, um, predators, crocodiles, reptiles, I don't know, whatever, but we would have been, um, before we were living as we are now, when we were back in the animal kingdom, which probably takes up about 99% of our evolutionary history, we are still hardwired to be scared of things like that, right? On a subconscious level. And this is the thing. Um, so it's monsters. Kids are more scared of monsters, instinctively, innately, than they would be of paedophiles, say for instance, where adults are scared on behalf of kids over paedophiles because this is a kind of a learnt adult concept. But kids are scared of monsters. Monsters represent reptiles, snakes, and apex predators which would eat them in their sleep if we were still living in the time before the more sophisticated time that we're living in now. And I'm wondering whether or not um, we have a lot of these fears that cause us to believe all sorts of things. You see, as I said, when it comes to a lot of things, like is there an Illuminati conspiracy or not? And I have my doubts about it. Are the normies right? No, I have my doubts about whether the normies are right or not. When it comes to the vaccine, well, as you, as I've said, I've taken it, but I'm not ideologically or politically motivated to be in a blue team or a red team when it comes to pro or anti the vaccine. You know, but at the same time, um, I'm kind of noticing that a lot of people seem to be only wanting to take one or the other side of political things and falling out and having fucking wars over it. And one of my um, one of the ones I've kind of noticed is uh, that is completely pointless and stupid. It's even affected sound engineers. Yeah, is analog better than digital, or is digital better than analog? And there's people making videos about this, saying why recording in the box will never be as good as um, recording on analog gear. And you know, it's all stupid. It's all stupid. It's all subjective. There's no nuance involved in it all. And, um, you know, I'm looking and thinking that these people who are telling us that we're going to descend into so, some, some sort of totalitarian hell, right? And I'm, I'm kind of coming to the conclusion now I don't think that's going to happen. I've, I've never really thought that's going to happen. I think that this is just um, paranoid delusion. I think this is one thing that human beings are prone to having, is paranoid delusion. I think what's going to happen is we are just trying to find a way of getting through something we've never dealt with before. We're going through an unplanned planned, um, experiment in the world at the moment. People are freaking out that we're only going to go towards a world where there's no freedom, where we're going to end up in a horrible dystopian surveillance technocracy. And that's the only direction that the world is going to go in. And I personally am of the opinion that it's not going to happen the way they say it's going to happen. The internet seems to be full of people who are telling us with absolute certainty and absolute authority, right, that this is what's going to happen. And if you disagree with them, you are the enemy. Because everyone's fucking becoming this way. And they're not aware of it. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I just want to contradict everyone. I just think, well, no, there are no sides to take here, man. There are no sides to take here, and I'm not taking anyone's side. And if people try to include me in their side of things, then I'll... I'll be the devil's advocate. I'll be, I'll be the enemy of both sides if, if I have to. Fuck it. Really. There's no one else who I'm going to allow to model my reality except moi. Indeed. That's the way it's going to be, right? And if uh, that's the way it's going to be and it's going to mean that I'm going to attract adversaries and I'm going to attract crazy fuckers who, to get angry at me over that because I'm not, um, because I don't interpret reality the way they do, then fuck them. But I honestly do think, right, that this insanity, this is something, we're in a time now where we've never dealt with anything like this before, right? 
the lockdowns, the COVID stuff. We've never dealt with anything like this before. And so many people out there are getting paranoid about the shit. And as I say, I'm not one for listening to paranoid people. I don't even care if they think they're right. I don't even care if they think they're in touch with the truth. I just look and think, well, what is the background, um, you know, collective mental state like? Is it paranoid? Well, then fuck them, you know, fuck it. I'm not interested in partaking in any of this, right? I think that we as a species, um, the Achilles heel, shall I say, for us being big-brained and sentient and, you know, existential and uh, existential, I'll not say that right, and, um, you know, mathematical, philosophical, ideological, abstract, and all the rest of it, I think that the, um, the real downside of it is that we are prone to mental illness because we are aware of a lot of stuff that makes us crazy. And um, while we have um, spent the last year and a half retreating into cyberspace and interacting more on the internet, we have um, spent less time in the analogue world. It's made us crazier than we otherwise would have been, causing all sorts of paranoid delusions to happen. And um, I think that really that's the problem. It's a great big problem that is bigger than all of the smaller problems that I kind of think that everyone is focusing on. And I do think this is what we really need to look at. Is the problem the human condition itself? And if it is, then, you know, there's only one thing we can do, really, and that's just to concentrate and focus on looking at this as some kind of acid test that we've got to pass you know, and if we do, some kind of rite of passage that we've got to get through, some sort of initiatory thing that we've got to get through, and we come out the other end of it triumphantly. And fuck all the paranoia, hey. Eh? That's what I say. Um, I think I shall leave it at that. Right. See you later, alligator. See you soon. Baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, do your bit to help send big tech to the land of MySpace by having a look at the show notes below and checking out our alternative platforms.